Welcome back. Let us see how far we can get in our discussion of variation calculation today. Uh, today what we will do is uh, we are going to sort of show you the result, we will run you through the procedure, we will not solve everything, we will not work out everything, but uh, we will just give you hints on how to do it and uh, we will discuss uh, what kind of results we get for two systems that are very familiar with us. The first one is a harmonic oscillator, the second one is particle in a box. Of course, uh, you can have exact solutions right, we have learned that. We know the exact solutions for your uh, harmonic oscillator and particle in a box. We can solve Schrodinger equation, we do not need any approximation methods. But then that is exactly why these systems for which exact solutions are available are excellent benchmarks for testing any new theory, any new approximation. And that is what we are going to do with uh, variational calculations. We are going to see uh, how we can uh, treat these two problems and whether we can get anywhere close to the exact solution of energy that we have got earlier. So uh, what I will do is uh, you can study from any book you are comfortable with no problem. And in fact there are many books like those of Prasad and A.K. Chandra which are excellent and easily available. Study them by all means, it is just that uh, I like the treatment of Macquarie the most as far as variational calculation for harmonic oscillator. I like the treatment of Pillard the most while talking about uh, variational calculation for particle in a box. So I am sort of going to follow their books, but uh, Prasad's book or A.K. Chandra's book or there are many other books, uh, you might want to study a little higher level Zabo's book, everything is fine. Whatever you understand as far as that material is uh, not less than what we are discussing here, that is enough, great. So I hope we are now all very familiar with the variational method. What we do here is that we try to develop a description of the ground state of an arbitrary system and for the nth time let me remind you that arbitrary system means a system for which Schrodinger equation cannot have, cannot be solved exactly. But you can write the Schrodinger equation, right? You might not be able to write the wave function, but uh, you, you can usually work out the Hamiltonian and you can write Schrodinger equation h psi 0 equal to e psi 0 and you can say that if we could somehow solve it then uh, we would get an expectation value of energy, ground state energy uh, that would be like this integral psi 0 star h psi 0 over all function space divided by integral psi 0 star psi 0 over all function space. The denominator once again for the nth time is going to be 1 if you use normalized wave functions. So the way to treat this is to start with a trial wave function and that is what we are going to do today and in the next module. So we start with some trial wave function and we will see how one can make a guess of that wave function. For that we will work out this functional epsilon 0. So the form of epsilon 0 is exactly the same as uh, that of E0. The only difference is that E0 is in terms of psi 0, epsilon 0 is in terms of phi. Okay? So we start with the trial wave function and uh, does, does it depend, uh, does it make uh, any difference, does it make any difference on what kind of function I choose? Can I choose a polynomial, can I choose Gaussian, exponential, what? We will discuss all these questions today. But what we have learned so far is something called upper limit theorem which says that no matter what trial or guess wave function that you get, you cannot do better than the best. You can never reach the actual value of energy of the ground state and you approach it from the top. Remember what we are interested in is stabilization. That means this energy is going to be negative E0. So you start from a zero energy, no interaction and then you start going towards it. That is why we are going from top to bottom, you are not going from bottom to top. You cannot have so many parameters uh, or you cannot somehow uh, synthesize a wave function in such a way 
that the energy that you get but from this expression is uh, lesser than the actual exact uh, solution for the ground state energy this is upper limit theorem. And what we have done is we have said that this is a strategy uh, you calculate energy uh, the, the last part actually we have not really done right vary parameters of the function recalculate we have not done all this but this is sort of a preview of what is going to come in future what we have done is that we have just minimized this in uh, with respect to the variation parameter and we have obtained the upper limit or upper bound on the ground state energy E0. And we have got results for hydrogen atom and the results is something like this uh, the exact solution is minus 0 0.500 multiplied by this quantity and E min means the minimum value of epsilon 0 that is the convention we will use that turns out to be you can neglect the second equal to sign here right. I mean here I mean no function is more equal than the others. Uh, those of you who have read uh, animal farm will understand what I am talking about here. Uh, but this equal sign is uh, just a typo please ignore it. But what we see is that we get minus 0 0.424 into something and the exact solution is minus 0.50 into something. So, we have gone close we have not got minus 0.1 multiplied by the same con same uh, constant we have got minus 0.424 which is very close to uh, minus 0 0.500 well uh, let us not say very close which is close to minus 0.500 but is more than it. So, we have demonstrated this hydrogen atom uh, using this hydrogen atom problem we have demonstrated the upper limit theorem. And if you remember the wave function we took in that case was a Gaussian function which is different from the actual exact wave function which is an exponential decay in R right. So, this is what we did as a demonstration and then we went ahead and we proved upper limit theorem as well the proof is really not very difficult. So, today uh, with this prior knowledge we try to tackle the problem of harmonic oscillator first. For harmonic oscillator we know that this here is the potential energy right a parabolic potential half kx square kind of potential. So, the first expectation is that this ground state wave function has to be symmetric about x equal to 0 right. Since the potential itself is symmetric with respect to x equal to 0 if the wave function is not symmetric then we got a problem. Yeah, I mean actually psi psi star should be symmetric, but when you are talking about ground state that is the lowest energy that would better be uh, symmetric uh, about x equal to 0. So, what kind of a function can we think of? Actually, we can think of many things, we can think of a Gaussian function. So, like your hydrogen atom ground state problem, if you want to start with a Gaussian function, uh, I do not want to stop you. In fact, I would like to encourage you to do it and see what kind of uh, answer you get. Okay. But what we will do is that we will choose uh, a trigonometric function a cosine function because uh, what is the value of say cosine x at x equal to 0 that is 1 right. And then as you go uh, towards plus x or minus x values would fall. So, what we do is we uh, take this this kind of a uh, symmetric cosine function as our initial guess function. And uh, this is what we write and we set the limits to be uh, x between minus and plus pi divided by 2 lambda. Okay. Of course, that would bring in a relationship between uh, say lambda and a, but then uh, see lambda here is really a variational constant parameter. Okay. So, we will play around with lambda little bit great, well it does not really there is no not necessary relationship between lambda a you can ignore that sorry. So, lambda is a variational parameter. So, what we want to do is uh, we want to work out the uh, expression of this functional epsilon 0 right and we want to find E min which is the minimum value of this functional with respect to lambda. So, to do that we remember that the Hamiltonian here is minus h cross square by 2 mu d 2 d x 2 plus k by 2 x square I will not discuss this further because we know it. Uh, in case of any difficulty please go back and uh, consult the lecture on harmonic oscillator. So, what is h phi? I want to uh, I am trying to evaluate the numerator right. So, h phi is going to be minus h cross by 2 mu d 2 d x 2 of cos lambda x 
plus k by 2 x square multiplied by cos lambda x simple as that. So, this turns out to be without much hassle h cross square lambda square by 2 mu cos lambda x right is that right you differentiate cos lambda x once you get a minus sin function right multiplied by lambda and then differentiate that once again you get a plus cos function again multiplied by lambda that gives you lambda square and the minus sign that came out in the first differentiation process that and this minus take care of each other and it becomes plus. So, h cross square by 2 mu that remains the constant that comes out is lambda square and you get back cos cosine x okay, plus you get k by 2 x square we are just multiplying it by cosine x. So, uh, what is comforting is that this function that we have chosen is an Eigen function of uh, the Hamiltonian. Okay. So, the choice may not be all that bad. Great. Now, what do we do? We have to evaluate this integral which I am not going to do step by step because it is very very long I am not about to do it. I encourage you to try and do it out yourself. Hopefully, uh, your mathematical skills at this point of time is much better than mine. Uh, since I do not work out maths anymore, my son who is in class 12 uh, often takes upper hand on me because he can ask me to work out mathematical problems that I cannot. I am sure uh, you are much better in maths than I am at this point of time. So, I encourage you to work this out. I will just tell you the answer well this is how you formulate it and the answer that you get is pi h cross square lambda divided by 4 mu plus pi cube by 48 minus pi by 8 k by lambda cube. Of course, you can simplify it further bring it to one numerator one denominator will not do it you will see why. Now, what is the denominator integral phi star phi dx right here it you do not have to say d tau one dimensional system so dx. So, integral phi star phi dx uh, what will it be that will be something like this. Uh, now, the limit is minus pi by 2, 2 lambda to plus pi by 2 lambda remember that is the range of x okay? you do not go from 0 to a here. So, cos square lambda x dx yeah well, if you go beyond this then again you will get some other kind of uh, I mean you will get uh, the opposite phase as well. So, you do not do, want to do that you just stop there. So, integrate this again see these are exact uh, the, these are definite integrals right. So, there is a compendium as you know you can see the value it comes out to simply to be pi by lambda pi by 2 lambda. So, what is the value of the functional this is what it is h cross square lambda square by 2 mu plus pi square by 24 minus 1 by 4 multiplied by k by lambda square we have definitely not worked it out I am showing you the final answer you are more than welcome to work it out by yourself. Okay. Now, to find the minimum of it we differentiate it with respect to lambda and equate it to 0 and then when you do that uh, this is the derivative with respect to lambda right h cross square lambda by mu yeah because I have differentiated lambda square. So, 2 has come out 2 in the numerator 2 in the denominator would cancel you are left with h cross square by mu multiplied by lambda minus by minus because I have lambda to the power minus 2 here. So, differential of that will be minus 2 multiplied by this I think I have no it is ok it is ok fine. So, this is what we get and finally, when you work it out uh, you get an expression for lambda square ok. I am not going through the steps because well they are easy it is very possible that I have made some mistake while uh, writing these equations. Please work it out yourself if there is any typo here correct it and you can always refer to the textbook uh, this is I think from Macquarie's book. Okay. So, we get an expression for lambda square which we are going to substitute in the expression for epsilon 0 phi to get E min. Remember we have equated this first derivative to 0 that means whatever we get by substituting this value of lambda, lambda is a variational parameter remember we are actually varying it. Right. For different values of lambda you are going to get different values of epsilon 0 and remember uh, what we have we had said about getting the surface and reaching the minimum. Here we are finding the minimum just by differentiating and equating to 0. So, uh, this particular value of lambda corresponds to the minimum value of epsilon 0 we substitute there and find the value that value we call E min and that turns out to be 
h cross square divided by 2 mu multiplied by root over pi square by 24 minus 1 fourth multiplied by root over 2 k mu by h cross plus pi square by 24. So, this is what it is I will not read it out, but uh, I think it is not very difficult to understand, but please do write out at least these steps yourselves. Okay. Now, you see when you simplify you uh, end up getting this familiar quantity root over k by 2 mu we know what it is is not it it is omega the uh, angular frequency of oscillation of the harmonic oscillator. So, what we can do is we write this expression we get this and uh, finally, it boils down to 2 to the power 3 by 2 square root of pi square by 24 minus 1 fourth multiplied by half h cross omega, okay? half h cross omega. So, I am not going taking you through the ev every simplification please do it yourself. So, half h cross omega we remember what it is. Uh, so, e min turns out to be if I just put in this value of pi and work this out turns out to be 1.14 multiplied by half h cross omega. Do you remember what the exact solution was? The exact solution was half h cross omega right. So, even though we have used some arbitrary wave function which uh, sort of uh, would have a compatible shape from common sense, we have got a value of e min which first of all satisfies the uh, variation theorem upper limit theorem and is higher than the exact value by 14 percent. Actually 14 percent is too much. Okay. You do not want uh, something that is away from the actual value by 14 percent in ideal scenario sometimes you have to live with it. But here see what we have done we have used such a simple wave function still we get only 14 percent overestimation of the uh, value of energy. Okay. So, given the level of simplification we have used here this is actually remarkable great. Now, let us move to the other system particle in a box. Here we expect the ground state wave function to vanish at the boundaries you might remember what the boundary condition is and secondly we also expect it to be uh, symmetric with respect to L by 2 or I do not remember whether I have used L or A in the uh, later calculation whatever it is it's either capital A or uh, capital L or small a. So, it has to be symmetric with respect to the uh, center right in this case L by 2 right two conditions then ground state wave function should vanish at boundaries and any wave function should vanish at the boundaries and the ground state wave function like that of particle in a box should be symmetric about the midpoint which is at x equal to L by 2. So, the trial function we use now so we can use so many functions you remember the exact function it is a sign function. So, uh, what we do is we deliberately move away from trigonometric function now we want to write an algebraic function because we want to see what happens when we write a wave function that is not similar to the exact one. Can we still live with it can we get close that is a question we are asking because uh, eventually we want to deal with systems in which we have absolutely no idea about what the wave function should look like. Should it be real should it be imaginary well real imaginary is not a problem perhaps because you can take linear combinations and go from one to the other, but we should it be trigonometric should it be exponential should it be something else. So, these things will not even know. So, while we have some control over the system while we are to talking about a system in which exact solution is known we want to go far away from what we know to be the correct solution and see if we can get anywhere close to the actual solution. So, what we do is we use an algebraic function x to the power alpha multiplied by L square minus x square let us say okay, where alpha is the variation parameter. You can use many other things you can use L minus x whole square or you can use just L minus x or you can use L minus x to the power alpha you may not use alpha here there are so many combinations I am just choosing one the one chosen by pillar. Okay. Does it satisfy the expectation at x equal to 0 this x to the power alpha equal to 0. So, the wave function is 0 at x equal to L L square minus x square will be equal to 0. So, again wave function is 0. So, at least that is satisfied and is it symmetric with respect to this 
L by 2 yeah x to the power alpha is an increasing function L square minus x square is a decreasing function. The product has to, to go through a maximum which is going to have occur at L by 2. So, our expectations the written one and the unwritten one are both met. We got a trial wave function which has a variational parameter great. So, now this is the Hamiltonian of course, you know what the Hamiltonian is right minus h cross square by m into d 2 dx 2 h, h cross square by 2 m into d 2 dx 2. Here I have deliberately eliminated the m like what Pillar has done because I also want to uh, just start the uh, start uh, sensitizing you to what what is called atomic units uh, you not unites uh, we all unite in using atomic units right this is units. So, in atomic units what happens is the most fundamental quantities like electronic mass electronic charge these are set to 1 and all the quantities we get are in terms of these ok. We are going to use them extensively when we talk about multi electron atoms. So, I just wanted to uh, be faithful to pillar and keep their convention ok. So, right. so, this is the Hamiltonian we use this is your epsilon 0 we know that by heart by now. So, this is the integral you want to evaluate you want to do it be my guest I am not about to do it because it takes so much of time see it is not difficult it is a highly doable problem and we have much more difficult problems that we set in say JE advanced or JE mains. But it is a lot of work it is tedious right. Uh, if I may use a term that is not so pleasant it is a lot of donkey work. So, uh, the only problem with it with this approach is that you have to do tedious calculations otherwise concept and all if you are careful it is not difficult ok. So, if you do that tedious calculation and then if you equate this d epsilon 0 d alpha to 0 then it turns out that we the value of parameter alpha is 0.862 right when uh, the minimum in epsilon 0 is obtained with respect to alpha ok. So, the wave function finally becomes phi equal to x to the power 0 0.862 multiplied by L square minus x square ok. So, ok I got the animation wrong but that does not matter. Now, E mean turns out to be so if you put this value and if you work out the uh, expression of epsilon 0 it turns out to be 1.043 multiplied by E0. So, I have jumped perhaps 40 50 steps here ok. I am just showing you the final answer E0 is the exact uh, value of energy that we have got earlier when we talked about particle in a box solution of Schrodinger equation. What we see is that we are away from it by only 4 percent in uh, your uh, simple in your harmonic oscillator we were away by 14 percent right. Here we are away only by 4 percent even though we have used such a strange weird trial function which looks nothing like uh, the actual exact wave function that we know what it is ok. So, as long as the shape matches and as long as you have a parameter that you can play around with you can uh, it seems you can get close to uh, the exact solutions. And if you think 4 percent is close just wait and see what happens in the next module when we try and increase the number of parameters we will keep getting closer and closer and closer. So, uh, that is what we wanted to discuss in this module two simple systems for which the exact solutions are known they serve as excellent testing pads for uh, this variational calculation and we have seen that in one case we can get close by 14 percent in the other case we can get close by 4 percent. And what we have done is that we have used very simple easy wave functions. Now that we are more or less convinced that we can use whatever wave function we like I mean at most we will have to do a bigger calculation, but we will never get an energy that is lower than the actual energy. What we will do now is we are going to see what happens when we uh, use wave functions trial wave functions 
that are actually linear combinations of some functions that is what we will discuss in the next module. Then later on we will go on to the discussion that we said some function. What happens if you use uh, orthonormal functions to uh, and we express this trial wave function as a linear combination of these orthonormal functions and use the coefficients of these functions to as variational parameters. What happens then? Okay. So, that is the path ahead and in the next module we come back and we pick it up from here.